What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Poker Vlog. Tonight we're headed out to play a slightly higher stakes session. We're going to be getting into the action. We play a huge bomb pot, lots of other crazy stuff. Going to be a great episode. Hope you guys enjoyed the last one. We got Gimli in here for good luck. Hit that thumbs up button if you like dogs or hate dogs or want to see more videos like this. Comment down below what you think of having Gimli in the intros or what kind of puppy you have. Anything like that is greatly appreciated. The algorithm loves comments, so we love comments. Let's get after it. Let's get into some hands. Buying in for $500 here. We're not messing around with these $300 buy-ins anymore. We're trying to push the action a little bit and get in some more deep stacked play where we can. Okay, guys, first interesting hand of the night. We've got six five of spades. We're in the cutoff. We've got 500 bucks in front of us. We see under the gun one open to $10. We see a pretty loose young player make the call. When the action gets to me, I decide we're going to go ahead and bump it up here with the suited connector. We expect to be in position in this hand when we make this play, so we're going to bet out 45 bucks. And pretty quickly, we get some kind of annoying news. We see the button make the call, so we're not going to be in position for this hand. And then we get some even more annoying news when we see the initial raiser and the initial caller all make the call. So we are going very multi-way to a flop, which is a weird one. We're flopping a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. So not our favorite. When the action eventually checks to me, I don't really think we have too many options here. I don't think this is a spot we can continue in this much, especially when we're four-handed like this. So I'm going to go ahead and check and we're kind of relieved when we see the action check through. The turn is a great one for us. It's the two of spades, so now we have even more outs. When we see the initial raiser bet $70, I think about raising, but we quickly see the other player make the call, so the middle position player make the call. I decide in this spot, we're just gonna go ahead and call as well, and we see the button make the fold, so at least we're gonna be in position for this hand. Off to see a river, we've got a ton of outs here, and the river comes down, the 10 of clubs. So obviously not one of our outs. We see under the gun one, bet a large sizing, and then we see the next player to act, the middle position player, shove all in for, I can't remember, plenty. Obviously we've got nothing here. We bricked everything. So we make the fold and we see the under the gun player make the call. Wait till you see this showdown, guys. This is pretty freaking wild. We see one player with pocket eights for a flopped set, and we see the other player with a backdoor club flush. So yeah, craziness. We could have won a big one here. We do not. We also see that we're getting called pretty loose on our three bets. So gonna file that one away. On to the next hand. Looking down at 10 nine of hearts for middle position, I'm gonna open up the action here to $20 over a limper, and we see the famous nit who we make fun of in almost every video and is in almost every session that we play, make the call. So we know he has something pretty good, something along the lines of queens or worse, because I think kings or aces are probably the only hands that he raises us with, although I don't even know if he raises those. So we're off to see a flop, which is where we start filming. Flop comes down, queen high with two hearts, so a pretty good flop for us. We see our opponent check, I bet out $25. He thinks about it for a little bit before eventually putting in the call. So we are off to see a turn, which comes down seven of diamonds, pretty terrible card. He checks and I check. River comes down the ace of diamonds, he bets out 50 bucks pretty quickly, and I'm out of there. I'm gonna fold, terrible hand, can't hit a draw to save my life, it seems like, recently. So, oh well, we lose this one. Don't think the nit's getting out of line here. I don't think this was a bluff. I really don't think there was a situation we could have taken this down. I would assume he has something like jacks or ace-queen or ace-something. I don't know. Maybe he could have a seven, too. Who knows? No way I was good, though. On to the next one. Looking down into suited wheel ace in this one, we've got ace three of diamonds. We're starting to stand with about 300 bucks. We see a loose young player open to $10 from the button. I'm in the big blind. I'm going to go ahead and make the call here, and we're going to go heads up to a flop. The rare heads up to a flop in this game. Comes down ace high flop with no with one diamond, so not a bad flop for us at all. I'm going to check here like I'm going to do with 100% of my range. He bets $10. I think I could check raise here, but since he's the opener, I don't think that's a good idea. He could have a bigger ace and have me crushed. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the call. And the turn comes down the two of hearts. I'm going to check again here, which I'm going to check almost every single time. And this time he checks back. So that's not ideal, but we're not too upset because it makes us feel like we're in good shape. Rear comes down the jack of diamonds. I check. After he checks again, I shut down my hand, and it is good against his 9-8 for a flopped middle pair. So we take down a small one. Feels nice to get on the board. It's the first hand we've won of the night, and we've been here a while. 
Looking down at King 10 of Diamonds, I'm under the gun in this one. The cutoff opens to 10 bucks. I call and we go four ways to a flop, which comes down 10 high with two spades. I decide we're gonna go ahead and lead out on this flop into multiple opponents. I don't know if I like that, but I wanna charge the flush draws some sort of price. So I bet $20 and we see only the cutoff eventually make the call. So we're not sad to see only one caller. We would have loved to just take this down, but obviously I'm putting him on a lot of flush draws here, and that's not great when the turn comes down the jack of spades. I'm gonna check, kind of expecting to see him bet, but he doesn't, he checks back. So we're off to see a river, which comes down the king of clubs, giving us two pair. I've got top two here. I don't think he has a flush anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and bet 20 bucks, and we're hoping to see a fold. But when he calls, we think we could have the best hand a decent amount of the time. He could just have a one pair hand. But unfortunately, we show our hand and he flips over pocket threes for the flopped set that he played in kind of a weird way. So we lose another one, kind of starting to get a little bit frustrated in this session. Things are not going our way. Looking down at two black sixes in this one, we're on the button. We end up calling a $15 raise from the under the gun player. Obviously we're just set mining here, but we get some pretty bad news and we see the big blind bump it up. He bumps it up to $45. So now we've got a decision on our hands. Do we have a deep enough stack to go set mining here for $45? Obviously we do not. This is a terrible call. It's made a little bit less bad though by the fact that we think the initial raiser is gonna be calling this, has already called this bet. So eventually we put the money in we're gonna go ahead and make the call, see if we can hit a set here. Obviously, this is gonna be a no set, no bet situation for us. Flop comes down, unimportant because there are no sixes on it. We see a bet of $35 from the initial raiser. We see a re-raise from the next player to act. Obviously, we're out of here, kinda of sucks. It ends up one player had pocket kings, the other player had ace five suited and flopped an ace. So on to the next one, not getting anything going still. Looking down at ace-king offsuit in this one, we're in the cutoff, we've only got 190 of our $500 left. I open a $15 preflop and we see a very active player in the small blind and a very active player in the big blind both just make the call. So we're off to see a flop, which is not our favorite flop ever. It is 9-3 deuce, so pretty much the driest flop you can imagine. Nothing for us there. When we see our opponents check, we're gonna go ahead and check and peel off another card. Good thing we do because the peeled off card is an ace. We see our opponent across the table, the small blind that is, bet out $15. I decide we're gonna go ahead and make the call and we go heads up to the river, which comes down to four. He checks, I'm gonna go ahead and bet out here, try and get some value from this. I bet $35. He doesn't think about it for all that long. Obviously at this point we're praying for a call, almost knowing we're gonna have the best hand, but he makes the fold. We take this one down. The wins tonight have been few and far between, so we're more than happy to find a win in this hand. Looking down at Ace Jack of Clubs this time, we're in the hijack. We see a button straddle to $10 and we see three callers. Well, you guys know what time it is. We're about to put in a raise. We're gonna bump it up to 40 bucks. I don't think that's quite big enough. I think I like 50 bucks better. But we see one fold, two folds. We see a player go a little bit into the tank and then ask how much we bet. And then they fold two. So we take out a bunch of money, basically uncontested. When you see a bunch of calls like that, seems like a good time to attack. This time it worked out. Doesn't always work out though. Time for a bomb pot here in the next one. I usually skip bomb pots, but I'm not super deep now and I'm stuck. So let's gamble it up and try and get it back. Looking down at a pretty nice bomb pot style hand, especially when we see these two boards. Obviously with a set on a monotone board and trips on the other board, we're in pretty good shape. When the action checks to me, I think there's enough out there for other people to have that I can bet pot. So we put out $80 and we eventually get one caller. So like I said, with a set on a monotone board and trips with almost top kicker on the other, we're happy to get some action. We only see the one caller off to an insane turn for us on board one, as now we have the absolute nuts with quads. The 10 on the other board doesn't help us, but it does give us a gut shot straight draw. My opponent only has around 120 or something like that left, so the money's obviously gonna go in here on the turn, and we are off to see the rivers. I put it in, and he makes the call. Board number one, the river doesn't change anything, which had been pretty hard for it to change, but on board number two, we get a slight upgrade to the Broadway straight but it's unlikely that that would have changed from us, you know, us to having the winning hand, we weren't already ahead. We show down our cards and after some deliberation, our opponent's trying to figure out what he has. Don't blame him here. There's a lot going on in these bomb pot hands. It actually takes me a minute to realize that I have a straight on the bottom board instead of just trips. So anyway, we end up eventually seeing our opponent's hand hit the muck. We're gonna take this one down. Nice hand, getting us almost unstuck for the night. Really annoying that we have to get unstuck in a bomb pot hand like this, 
but we'll take it. We're back to over $400, so we just have a little bit of work to do, and we can dig ourselves out of this crazy hole that we've ended up in. Let's get after it. That was a big one. Hitting quads on these bomb pots. Let's see if we can hit quads in a regular Texas Hold'em hand. In one of the most interesting hands of the night, we look down at pocket nines from the button. We've got around $400 in front of us. We see an open from middle position to $15. We see one call before I decide to go ahead and raise it up to 50 bucks here. Unfortunately, we see a pretty much a snap call from the initial raiser and then a call from the initial caller. So we are gonna go three ways to this flop. We've got a very certain card in mind. We do not see it though. The flop comes jack 10-4 with two clubs. The action fairly quickly checks to me. I decide we're gonna go ahead and bet out here. I'm gonna have tons of hands that wanna bet here. Flush draws, over pairs, all kinds of hands. I'm gonna have sets of jacks and sets of tens. So I bet out $80. Unfortunately, once again, both players call. So we are going very multi-way in a very big pot. Was hoping that we would lose at least one opponent, but at least we're in position here. Turn comes down the eight of diamonds. And once again, we see the, both opponents check to me. I decide I'm gonna go ahead and check back here. I picked up some equity, so I don't know if I should be checking to realize my equity or since that should be a good call for a good card for the callers or not. Off to see a river, really hoping that we can improve our hand somehow. The river is the six of diamonds, so we do not improve. We see the initial razor check. Then we see our other opponent shove all in for around $400. This doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I feel like this is way too big of a bet for him to be making if he's looking for value. I'm well into the tank here. I'm genuinely thinking about making a call here with pocket nines. I don't really know if this could possibly even make any sense to call. Just the amount that he bet really made me think that he was trying to take this one away without having made his hand. Obviously the front door clubs missed, but a lot of straight draws got there. I'm not really sure what he could possibly have. Eventually, after we think about it for a while, we go ahead and fold. I decide we can't make this hero call, thinking it would probably be bad, especially with a player behind us who snap folds. So our opponent claimed to have missed clubs, but have a super strong hand, assuming he had some sort of straight after missing his club draw, which is possible, but we lose a big one. Would have been really nice to improve on the river and take this one down. Looking down at ace-jack offsuit in this one, we're going to open up to $10 this time in a non-straddle pot. I think this was an accident. I think I meant to open to 15 But anyways, we throw out $10 and we end up going four ways to the flop. So very multi-way, as seems to be the way things go. Not the best flop for us, obviously. Action ends up checking through to me. I didn't hit anything here. I'm going to go ahead and check. And we're off to see a turn for free. So that's pretty nice. Not about to cry about that. Turn comes down, a great one for us. It's a jack of hearts. So now we've got top pair, top kicker. One of the best cards in deck for me. Obviously, when the action checks to me, I'm gonna bet out here and see if we can get some value. And sure enough, we have a customer. The small blind goes ahead and makes the call. So not too disappointed to see someone put in a little bit of money here. Obviously, we're gonna be ahead the vast majority of the time. River comes down the nine of diamonds, so that shouldn't change too much. I decide I'm gonna go ahead and bet $25. We see our opponent go a little bit into the tank, not at all actually, and snap fold, showing us ace five. So we're going to take this one down. Good to win a hand, bounce back a little bit from our terrible debacle with pocket nines. Looking down at seven, six of diamonds in this hand, I'm going to call a $10 raise from early position. I'm in the hijack in this one. There are like two other callers, I think, and we are off to see a flop. Kind of an interesting flop. We're flopping middle pair with a backdoor flush draw. I decide to go ahead and take the lead here to protect my hand from hands like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack. I bet out $10 and we see folds except for the initial raiser who makes the call pretty quickly. So the turn comes down, the three of hearts, pairing the board. I think that's a pretty good card for us. I don't think he's gonna have very many threes. I could have some threes in my range. I could have hands like six three, for instance, or I could have all the sets here, I think. Although maybe I don't just bet, this, bet out on the sets. We get weird news though when he bets out $25. I decide to make the call as this doesn't really make any sense for me. Like, why is he taking the lead here? River comes down the nine of diamonds and he decides to bet out $50. Didn't really see this coming. I'm pretty confused. Like, what is he going to have here? What hands would he actually play this way? I don't really know. It feels like a very awkward spot. I think I'm a little bit frustrated at this point in the session too, which makes me a little bit stickier. I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. Obviously, I have a pure bluff catcher here, but on this board, a six 
shouldn't be that bad. He shouldn't have that many nines. Like, should he have any threes here? Thinking about it, thinking about it, eventually we decide we don't believe him. We're putting in the call here, and he quickly shows us pocket jacks. So, surprised that he had pocket jacks here, surprised he played him that way. Although, thinking back, it makes a little bit of sense. And yeah, we lose a weird one that we didn't have to play that way, and we definitely didn't have to lose that way, and we definitely didn't have to pay off the $50 on the end. Looking down at ace-jack offsuit from the small blind, we see the same player from the hand before open to $15. I make the call, and we are going heads up to the flop, which comes down king high, all clubs. I go ahead and check, and we see our opponent check back. The turn comes down the nine of diamonds. I don't think there's really a whole lot for us to do here. We check, and we see him check also. River comes down the 10 of clubs, so now we have a flush. I decide I'm going to go ahead and check here. If he bets, I'm going to be calling. Sure enough, he bets out $20. We're going to make the call here. We've got a decent sized flush. Unfortunately for us, he shows us the ace of clubs, so we're pretty frustrated now. Down to around $150 from our $500 buy-in. Yikes. In what's going to be the last hand of the night, we're going to open it up to $15 here with ace, 10 of diamonds. We're in fairly late position. I think maybe we were in the hijack, but I'm not 100% sure. And we see a fairly active player bump it up to $45. I'm done with this. I'm going to go ahead and ship it in here. Unfortunately for us, we see the snap call. He shows us pocket queens, so we are off to see a flop. Not the best flop for us. We had some outs, but we don't hit any of them. We're out of here. You guys saw the board. We're pretty frustrated, down 500 bucks, don't feel like the game's nearly good enough to justify rebuying, so we're out of here. That's going to be a $500 loss. Pretty disappointing. Well guys, obviously not exactly what we had in mind here. I'm starting to think this little dog might be bad luck. In for 500, out for zero. I don't feel like we played very well. Maybe I was being a little bit too aggressive with my opens and three bets with suited connectors. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. I appreciate everybody watching this. I appreciate all the new subscribers, all the likes, all the comments. I read and answer every single comment, so I appreciate everybody that gets in there and gives me their feedback on how I'm doing with these videos and how my play is going. Obviously, it doesn't feel right now like it's going very well, so let me know what you think about that. See you next Tuesday with another episode. Have a good one. Kenny's out of here.